Whether we like it or not, we live in an age where much of what goes on in our daily lives is monitored, collected, and sold to interested parties. Our driving records, our medical history, our internet traffic, and most importantly, our credit information. A mistake on your credit report can cost you money. It can increase the interest you pay on loans, prevent you from getting a mortgage or buying a car, landing a job, or getting a security clearance. It's not uncommon. And as we first reported in February, a government study indicated that as many as 40 million Americans have a mistake on their credit report. 20 million have significant mistakes. And our own investigation of the credit reporting industry shows that those mistakes can be nearly impossible to get removed from your record. Consumer credit reporting is a $4 billion a year industry dominated by three large companies, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. They keep files on 200 million Americans in traffic in our financial reputations. They make their money gathering information from people we do business with and selling it to banks, merchants, insurance companies, and employers. And they use it to make judgments about our creditworthiness and reliability. But now the reliability of the industry is being questioned in an eight-year Federal Trade Commission study. John Leibowitz is the chairman. Here's what we found, some pretty troubling information. One out of five Americans has an error on their credit report. And one out of 10 has an error on their credit report that might lower their credit score. I'm trying to think of another industry where a 20% a error rate would be acceptable. That's a pretty high error rate. It's a pretty high error rate. I think the more we look at this, and the more the American people know about this, the madder they're gonna get. Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine has opened his own investigation into the credit reporting industry, which for years has blamed mistakes on banks and merchants that provide them with bad information. But DeWine argues the fault lies with the industry for what he says are clear violations of the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Do these companies have a legal responsibility to make sure that the information is accurate? The, the federal law says that if you believe that there is a mistake, you can go to them and they have an obligation to do a reasonable investigation. They're not doing a reasonable investigation. They're not doing an investigation at all. Every day, DeWine's office fields calls from desperate constituents who can't get the credit reporting agencies to answer their questions or correct mistakes on their report like paid bills listed as delinquent, closed accounts listed as open, and bad debts that belong to other people with similar names or social security numbers. The, the problem is not that they make mistakes, it's they won't fix the mistakes. It literally is like this you know, guy behind the curtain in The Wizard of Oz, you really don't know what he's doing. It, it really is a secret operation that is so hard to crack. Eight million people a year file disputes about their credit report, which usually requires a visit to the Experian, TransUnion, or Equifax websites. They're primarily designed to sell you premium products, not resolve a dispute, which is what I was trying to do. There's a toll-free number you can call, which is likely to connect you to someone on a faraway continent. Thank you for calling. My name is Kevin. I'm here to help you. Where, where are you located? India. India. But regardless of where they are or who you talk to, they won't be much help. Okay, so really, you can't do anything for me. I've just been talking to you for 15 minutes. I mean, the only thing you can do is to tell me to fill it out online. Yes, Mr. Croft. Okay, thank you. Besides the toll-free number, they also give you a post office box address where you can send a letter and documents supporting your claim. In each case, it's extremely unlikely that anyone with the authority to resolve your dispute will ever actually see it. Ask Sandra Cortez, a California accountant whose credit report confused her with an international drug trafficker. It took her five years to get it fixed. Or David Smith, the retired army officer whose credit report listed a bankruptcy that wasn't his and triggered a foreclosure proceeding against his house in South Carolina he's still dealing with a fallout. Or Judy Thomas, a trauma nurse with a horror story worthy of Hitchcock or Kafka. There's nobody to go to. There's nobody. 
You just keep making phone calls and you just keep writing disputes and you keep sending them your social security number and they don't care. Thomas, who manages two medical centers near Cleveland, says it all began in 1999 when she went shopping for a new dress and applied for a store credit card to get a 15% discount. She was denied. Was that the first time you'd ever been denied credit? Yes, very first time. Ever? Ever. Ever. But certainly not the last. It became a regular occurrence. The personal credit reports she got from Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax were all clean and without blemish. Yet she kept getting rejected and couldn't find out why. I would get a consumer report and it would look fine. I would go to the bank and they would tell me, oh no, you have all this debt. But no one would tell me what was on there. They wouldn't tell you what the debt no. was? And they wouldn't give you a copy of the report nope. that they had? No. Nope. It took Judy Thomas several years to discover what almost no one knows, that the credit reports the agencies send to you are different than the ones they sell to banks, merchants, and mortgage brokers. And she only found that out when a loan officer left her file on his desk and walked out of the room. And what did you see? I saw debt from Utah Medical Center. I saw debt from a veterinarian clinic in Utah. I saw collections for a Judith Kendall. Judith Kendall, mm -hmm. not Judy Thomas. Correct. What's going through your mind? What the hell is she doing on my credit report? What the hell is her debt doing on my credit report? You think this would be very simple to get straightened out? You would think. Yeah, you would think. This is my Judy Thomas versus Judith Kendall file. Instead, it became a six-year battle with credit agencies requiring box loads of correspondence to try and prove that she was Judy Thomas, not Judith Kendall, all to no avail. You, you get a lot of time invested in this. How important are these documents? It's my life. There are logs of daily phone calls to dispute centers, hundreds of letters to Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, even correspondence from Judith Kendall's creditors in Utah acknowledging that the debts on her credit report aren't hers. I would get letters back from these companies saying this, in fact, is not you. You still couldn't get it off your credit report? No, I sent copies to the credit bureaus, and they, and they would come back as mine, verified, verified. I also hired a, a, a local attorney to try and straighten it out. We had everything certified. Um, that this is Judy Thomas, this is where I live, I've never gone by the name of Kendall, I've never even been to Utah, let alone owing a cable company in Utah. And what happened? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. What kind of problems did this cause for you? <laughs> I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't refinance, I couldn't take advantage of the, the interest rates, I couldn't get a new, I couldn't get a car, I couldn't, I couldn't co-sign for my, my children's student loans, and I'd worked hard for my credit. I, I was, and these people were taking it away from me. Finally, Judy Thomas took the only recourse available to her. She sued Equifax and TransUnion in federal court, and after a year-long battle, the credit reporting agency settled for an undisclosed sum and promised to clean up her file. Did you think it was going to take a federal lawsuit? Heck no, it just, takes a, it just takes a human being going, wow, this isn't Judith Kendall, let me fix this. That's all they had to do. But as we discovered, that almost never happens. If you challenge a credit report and mail your information to a post office box in the United States, the dispute will likely be investigated in India or the Philippines or South America. We traveled 5,000 miles to the Chilean capital of Santiago, where we tracked down three former Experian employees. Carolina Herrera, Rodolfo Carrasco, and Enzo Valdivia were all dispute agents at Experian's National Consumer Assistance Center, although they say they weren't able to offer consumers much assistance. So if somebody had a problem with their, with their credit report, they would send it a complaint and it yeah, would end yeah. up with you? Yeah, probably, yeah. So how many of these did you have to do a day? Ninety. Ninety. Ninety, yeah. Did you consider yourself investigators? Mm. No, no, not at all. <laughs> did you have any way to investigate these claims? No, we no. didn't. You can call the person. You can't pick up the phone and call? No. No. Do you have phones? No. No. 
Could you email them? No. Did you have the authority to say, wait a minute, after looking at somebody's file and say that, you know, this is a, somebody made a mistake, this person doesn't owe this money? No, we didn't have that power. All they did was read the disputes and reduce them to a two-digit code, like never late or not mine. It was then sent with a two or three line summary and no documentation back to the bank or department store that furnished the original information. If there was a difference of opinion between the, the creditor and the person who was filing the complaint, how was it usually resolved in, the, in favor of the creditor? Yeah. yeah. The creditor was always, uh, always right. Mostly we took for granted the word of the bank. If the bank said, hey, this guy owns $100, so it is. None of us have ever interviewed anybody in, in Chile from Experian. And we've got a federal court ordering them to, to bring these people forward, and we're still waiting. Much of what's known about the inner workings of the consumer credit agencies come out of lawsuits filed by Len Bennett and Sylvia Goldsmith, who have subpoenaed company records and deposed employees and executives. They say under the current system, there is no way for people like Judy Thomas to get their problem solved. So all these people who take the time to meticulously document a case that the bill isn't theirs or the bill has been paid, that is never seen by anybody? It's not seen by anyone who considers it in determining whether or not information will be uh, removed from a credit report. It's not forwarded on to the person who has the complaint with you? No, it is never forwarded on, never forwarded on to the creditor. We can get a jury verdict for a million dollars. That's chump change <laughs> to some of these bureaus. They would rather pay a verdict in a million dollars than to actually go in and change the policies and procedures that they have because that's much more expensive to them. I can say this without qualification. The dispute procedures used by the credit reporting agencies, uniformly used, completely fail to comply with the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Courts have found that, the Federal Trade Commission has found that, uh, it, it, it's not even a close call. Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine agreed. I think the industry is a mess, and I think the impact it has on, on real people is just unconscionable. You think they're breaking the law? I think they're breaking the law. There is no doubt in my mind they are breaking the law. We wanted to talk to Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian, but like most consumers, we were unsuccessful. The agencies referred us to the spokesman for their lobbying group in Washington. He, too, declined our request for an on-camera interview. But he did provide a written statement citing an industry-sponsored survey that showed that 95 percent of its customers were satisfied with the dispute process. The industry maintains it's in compliance with federal law. And one final update. In February, John Leibowitz stepped down as chairman of the Federal Trade Commission.